In today's video, we are making this console table from scratch. Let's get started. As always, I went to Home Depot and got the lumber cut. They not only cut it, but also suggest what's better for the project. This is how your wood stack should look. This console table went through a lot of plan change. You will get the exact measurement of the final product in the description below. First, I'm gonna make a box frame by attaching two 45 by one and two 12 by one inches wood stud. I used wood screws for this. This is going to be the base for the tabletop. So to make it stronger, I placed another piece of wood in the middle. For the tabletop, I'm gonna use two 48 by 8 inches pieces. It turned out that these wood pieces are not absolutely straight. It happens often when we work with wood. So here I'm trying to find the best possible fit by altering their position. This is going to be quite a tall table, 40 inches tall. To maintain the balance of this table, it's important to make sure that the overhang is equally spaced each side. And before drilling in, I double and triple check that. Trust me, if we do it correctly from the beginning, it will save us a lot of time later. Finally, I was sure enough to start drilling and attaching the wood pieces with the base. Preferably, we should use nails on the tabletop. But I have a plan to hide the screws, so I'm just using one and a half inch wood screws. For the legs, I'm using four 2x2 two two inches wood studs. These are 39 inches long. I'm gonna attach the legs with the base using two and half inches wood screws. You will find me using free drill most of the time because I learned over the time that when we drive screws into the wood without drilling pilot hole, we are basically pushing wood out of the way to make room for the screw. It can lead to splitting, cracking, and weakening wood over time. I measured the gap between two legs and this time I'm gonna use my brand new handsaw. I'm planning to work my way up to a miter saw someday. I don't know what is this yellow thing called, but it came with various angles. I will use some of those angles today. I used clamps to secure the set with kitchen countertop. Uh, still, I was so intimidated by the saw that I had my husband cut the first one. Clearly, I had a bit trouble working with the drilling machines because I forgot to charge them beforehand. I was planning to put some angled pieces randomly to sort of create an abstract modern look. I know, pretty ambitious, right? This angled piece is 40 inches long. I used the yellow box to cut a 45 degree angle on one side. And then I screwed the piece with the frame of the tabletop from the side. I hope it's making sense. If not, please follow the video. I was feeling little fancy and I found these beautiful wooden trims at Home Depot that can transform any ordinary furniture to a designer piece. I got one for myself. When I was carving the wood trims, I used one part water and one part rubbing alcohol to soften the wood. I found about this trick from another YouTube channel named Carver's Wood Shop. I will link her video in the description so that you can check out for more tricks and hacks. Construction glue is very strong and here I'm using construction glue to attach the trims with the tabletop. top. 
Remember I told you that I have plans to cover the screw heads? Well, here is that. I'm using plastic wood to cover the gaps, screw heads and all the visible imperfections. I attached another piece of 2x2 at the back. This is very important step for the overall balance of this table. This is a part of my entryway makeover video that I'll be posting very soon. I just finished painting the entryway and waiting for the switchboard cover and few more hardware to come. I hope that explains the blue tape everywhere. I still have to learn a lot more about miter cut. There were gaps between the trims. The best solution I could think of is using oud putty. That will work for now. What do you think? I tried to attach another piece of wood using glue to avoid screw head in the middle, but it didn't work. So I had to screw these pieces together. My entryway table is finally ready. Now it's time to paint. As usual, I'm gonna start by lightly sanding the surface with 220 grit sandpaper. After sanding, it's very very important to clean your furniture thoroughly. Better cleaning will ensure better paint finish. Okay, I wasn't sure which one to pick. Navy blue seemed to be a safer choice, but I really really wanted to try this light blue chalk paint by Deco Art. I decided to apply one coat of Deco Art chalk paint and see how it goes, but I did not like the color. So back to navy blue paint. Because both of these paints are from same color scheme, I didn't have to worry how the end result will be. I must say, this is a beautiful color. It has a matte finish which has always been my personal preference. To paint inside the calves of this cream, I'm using a smaller brush. After applying two coats of paint, I got my desired color. But there is still one thing to do. I'm gonna use wax with a lint-free towel. I'm applying wax because I want to preserve the matte finish of the paint and also to protect the furniture from daily wear and tear. So our console table is completely ready. I have decorated it with whatever I had and you will get to see the upgraded decor in my entryway makeover video in next week. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel.